Act Five of Cymbeline by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Five, Scene One, Britain, the Roman camp. Enter Posthumus with a bloody handkerchief. Yea, bloody cloth, I'll keep thee, for I wished thou shouldst be coloured thus. You married ones, if each of you should take this course, how many must murder wives much better than themselves for rhyme but a little? Oh, Pisanio, every good servant does not all commands, no bond but to do just ones. Gods, if you should have taken vengeance on my faults, I never had lived to put on this. So had you saved the noble Imogen to repent, and struck me, wretch more worth your vengeance. But alack, you snatch some hence for little faults. That's love, to have them fall no more. You some permit to second ills with ills, each elder worse, and make them dread it to the doer's thrift. But Imogen is your own. Do your best wills, and make me blessed to obey. I am brought hither among the Italian gentry, and to fight against my lady's kingdom. Tis enough that, Britain, I have killed thy mistress. Peace, I'll give no wound to thee. Therefore, good heavens, hear patiently my purpose. I'll disrobe me of these Italian weeds, and suit myself as does a Briton peasant. So I'll fight against the part I come with. So I'll die for thee, O Imogen, even for whom my life is every breath a death. And thus, unknown, pitied nor hated, to the face of peril myself I'll dedicate. Let me make men know more valour in me than my habits show. Gods, put the strength of the Leonati in me, to shame the guise of the world. I will begin the fashion, less without and more within. Exit. Scene two. Field of battle between the British and Roman camps. Enter from one side Lucius, Iacimo, and the Roman army. From the other side the British army. Leonatus Posthumus following like a poor soldier. They march over and go out. Then enter again in skirmish. Yakimo and Posthumus. He vanquisheth and disarmeth Yakimo, and then leaves him. The heaven as unguilt within my bosom takes off my manhood. I have belied a lady, the princess of this country, and the air on it revengingly enfeebles me. How oh, could this cow, a very judge of natures, have subdued me in my profession? Knighthoods and honours born as I wear mine are titles but of scorn if the thy gentry britain go before this lout as he exceeds our lords the odds is that we scarce are men and you are gods exit the battle continues the britons fly cymbeline is taken then enter to his rescue Bellarius, guiderius and arviragus stand stand we have the advantage of the ground the lane is guarded nothing routs us but the villainy of our fears stand stand, stand, stand and fight, fight. re-enter posthumus and seconds the britons they rescue cymbeline and exeunt then re-enter lucius and iacimo with imogen away boy from the troops and save thyself for friends kill friends, and the disorder such as war were hoodwinked. Get their fresh supplies. Is the day turned strangely? Oh, the times let's reinforce or fly. Exeunt. Scene three. Another part of the field. Enter Posthumus and the British Lord. Camest thou from where they made the stand? I did. Though you, it seems, come from the flyers. I did. No blame be to you, sir. For all was lost, but that the heavens fought. The king himself of his wings destitute, the army broken, 
and but the backs of Britain seen, all flying through a straight lane, the enemy full-hearted, lolling the tongue with slaughtering, having work more plentiful than tools to do it, struck down some mortally, some slightly touched, some falling merely through fear, that the straight pass was damned with dead men hurt behind, and cowards living to die with length and shame. Where was this lane? Close by the battle, ditched and walled with turf, which gave advantage to an ancient soldier, an honest one, I warrant, who deserved so long a breeding as his white beard came to, in doing this for his country. Athwart the lane, he, with two striplings, lads more like to run the country base than to commit such slaughter, with faces fit for masks, or rather fairer than those for preservation cased or shame, made good the passage, cried to those that fled, Ah, Britain's hearts die flying, not our men, to darkness fleet souls that fly backwards. Stand, or we are Romans, and will give you that like beasts which you shun beastly, and may save but to look back and frown. Stand, stand. These three, three thousand confident and act as many, for three performers are the file when all the rest do nothing. With this word, stand, stand, accommodated by the place, more charming with their own nobleness, which could have turned a distaff to a lance, gilded pale looks, part shame, part spirit renewed, that some turned coward but by example. Oh, a sin in war, damned in the first beginners, gan to look the way that they did, and to grin like lines upon the pikes of the hunters. Then began a stop with the chaser, a retire, and on the rout, confusion thick. Forthwith they fly, chickens, the way which they stooped eagles, slaves, the strides they victors made, and now are cowards, like fragments and hard voyagers, became the life of the need, having found the back door open of the unguarded hearts. Heavens, how they wound some slain before, some dying. Some, their friends, are born in the former wave. Ten, chased by one, are now each one the slaughter-man of twenty. Those that would die or ere resist are grown the mortal bugs of the field. This was strange chance. A narrow lame, an old man, and two boys. Nay, do not want at it. You are made rather to want at the things you hear than to work any. Will you rhyme upon it, and vent it for a mockery? Here is one. Two boys, an old man twice a boy, a lane, preserved the Britons, was the Romans vain. Nay, be not angry, sir. Lack, to what end? Who dares not stand his foe, I'll be his friend. For if he'll do as he is made to do, I know he'll quickly fly my friendship too. You have put me into rhyme. Farewell. You're angry. Exit. Still going? This is a lord. A noble misery. To be in the field and ask what news of me. Today how many would have given their honours to have saved their carcasses. Took heel to do it, and yet died too. I, in mine own woe charmed, could not find death where I did hear him groan, nor feel him where he struck, being an ugly monster to strange you hides him in fresh cups soft beds sweet words wrath more ministers than we that draw his knives to the war well i will fight him for being now a favourer to the briton no more a briton i have resumed again the part i came in fight i will no more but yield me to the veriest hind that shall once touch my shoulder great the slaughter is here made by the Roman, great the answer be Britons must take. For me, my ransom's death. On either side I come to spend my breath, which neither here I'll keep nor bear again, but end it by some means for Imogen. Enter two British captains and soldiers. Great Jupiter be praised, Lucius is taken. 
tis thought the old man and his sons were angels there was a fourth man in a silly habit that gave the affront with them so tis reported but none of em can be found stand who's there a roman who had not now been drooping here if seconds had answered him lay hands on him a dog a leg of rome shall not return to tell what crows have pecked him here he brags his service as if he were of note bring him to the king enter cymbeline bellarius guiderius Aviragus, pisanio soldiers attendants and roman captives the captains present posthumus to cymbeline who delivers him over to a jailer then exeunt omnes scene four a british prison enter posthumus and two jailers uh, you shall not now be stolen you have locks upon you so grace as you find pasture nay or his stomach exeunt jailers most welcome bondage for thou art away i think to liberty yet am i better than one that's sick of the gout since he had rather grown so in perpetuity than be cured by the sure physician death who is the key to unbar these locks my conscience thou art fettered more than my shanks and wrists you good gods give me the penitent instrument to pick that bolt then free for ever is it enough i am sorry so children temporal fathers do appease gods are more full of mercy must i repent i cannot do it better than in gyves desired more than constrained to satisfy if of my freedom tis the main part take no stricter end of me than my all i know you are more clement than vile men who of their broken debtors take a third a sixth a tenth letting them thrive again on their abatement that's not my desire for imogen's dear life take mine and though tis not so dear yet tis a life you coined it between man and man they weigh not every stamp though light take pieces for the figure's sake you rather mine being yours and so great powers if you will take this audit take this life and cancel these curled bonds oh imogen i'll speak to thee in silence sleeps solemn music enter as in an apparition sicilius leonatus father to posthumus an old man attired like a warrior leading in his hand an ancient matron his wife and mother to posthumus with music before them then after some music follow the two young leonati brothers to posthumus with wounds as they died in the wars they circle posthumus round as he lies sleeping no more thou thunder master show thy spite on mortal flies with mars fall out with juno chide that thy adulteries rapes and revenges hath my poor boy done aught but well whose face i never saw i died whilst in the womb he stayed attending nature's law whose father then as men report thou orphans father art thou shouldest have been and shielded him from this earth vexing smart lucina left not me her aid but took me in my throes that from me was posthumous rip came crying amongst his foes a thing of pity great nature like his ancestry molded the stuff so fair that he deserved the praise of the world as great Cecilius heir when once he was mature for man in 
Britain, where was he that could stand up as bearer? Or fruitful object be, an eye of Imogen, that best could do his dignity? With marriage, wherefore was he monk? To be exiled and thrown from the unlucky seat, and cast from her his dearest one, sweet Imogen? Why did you suffer, Yakibo? Slight thing of Italy, to taint his nobler heart and brain with needless jealousy, and to become the geck and scorn of the other's villainy. For this, from stiller seats we came, our parents and us twain, that striking in our country's cause fell bravely and were slain, our fealty and Tenantia's right with honor to maintain. Like hardened portions that have to symbol it performed. Then, Jupiter, thou king of gods, why hast thou thus adjured the graces for his merit to being all to Dola's turned? Thy crystal window open, look out, no longer exercise upon a valiant race thy harsh and potent injuries. Send Jupiter, her son, he stood. Take off his miseries. Peep through thy marble mansion, help. Or we poor ghosts will cry to the shining synod of the rest against thy deity. Help, help Jupiter, 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 from thy trusty mind. Jupiter descends in thunder and lightning, sitting upon an eagle. He throws a thunderbolt. The ghosts fall on their knees. No more, you petty spirits of region low, offend our hearing. Hush! How dare you ghosts accuse the thunderer, who spoke, you know, sky planted it better all rebelling coasts. Poor shadows of Elysium, hence, and rest upon your never withering banks of flowers. Be not with mortal accidents oppressed. No care of yours is, you know, tis ours. Whom best I love, I cross, to make my gift the more delayed, delighted. Be content, your low laid son or Godhead will uplift. His comforts thrive, his trials well are spent. Our jovial star reigned at his birth, and in our temple was he married. Rise and fade, he shall be lord of Lady Imogen, and happier much by his affliction made. This tablet lay upon his breast, wherein our pleasure is full of fortune doth confine. And so, away! No further with your din expressive patience, lest you stir up mine. Mount, eagle, to my palace crystalline. He came in thunder, his celestial breath was sulphurous to smell. The holy eagle stooped us, two foot us. His ascension is more sweet than our blessed fields. His royal bird prunes the immortal wing and cloys his beak as when his god is pleased. Thanks, Jupiter. The marble pavement closes. He is entered. His radiant roof away and stupid blessed. Let us with care perform his great behest. <gasps> Sleep, thou hast been a grandsire, and the god a father to me, and thou hast created a mother and two brothers, but O oh, scorn! Gone! They went hence so soon as they were born. And so I am awake. 
poor wretches that depend on greatness favour dream as i have done wake and find nothing but uh, alas i swerve many dream not to find neither deserve and yet are steeped in favours so am i that have this golden chance and know not why what fairies haunt this ground a book a rare one be not as is our fangled world a garment nobler than that it covers let thy effects so follow to be most unlike our courtiers as good as promise reads when hers a lion's web shall to himself unknown without seeking find and be embraced by a piece of tender air and when from a stately cedar shall be lopped branches which being dead many years shall after revive be jointed to the old stock and freshly grow then shall posthumus end his miseries britain be fortunate and flourish in peace and plenty tis still a dream or else such stuff as madmen tongue and brain not either both or nothing or senseless speaking or a speaking such as sense cannot untie be what it is the action of my life is like it which i'll keep if but for sympathy re-enter jailers <coughs> come sir are you ready for death <laughs> over roasted rather ready long ago hanging is the word sir if you be ready for that <laughs> you are well cooked so if i prove a good repast to the spectators the dish pays the shot a heavy reckoning for you sir but the comfort is you shall be called to no more payments fear no more tavern bills which are often the sadness of parting as the procuring of mirth ah uh, you come in faint for want of meat depart reeling with too much drink sorry that you have paid too much and sorry that you are paid too much purse and brain both empty <laughs> the brain the heavier for being too light the purse too light being drawn of heaviness of this contradiction you shall now be quit <laughs> oh the charity of a penny cord it sums up thousands in a trice you have no true debitor and creditor but it of what's past is and to come the discharge your neck sir is pen book and counters so the acquittance follows i am merrier to die than thou art to live <laughs> indeed sir he that sleeps feels not the toothache uh, but a man that were to sleep your sleep and the hangman to help him to bed i think he would change places with his officer for look you sir you know not which way you shall go yes indeed do i fellow ah uh, your death has eyes in his head then i have not seen him so pictured you must either be directed by some that take upon them to know or to take upon yourself that which i am sure you do not know or jump the after inquiry on your own peril and how you shall speed in your journey's end i'll think you'll never return to tell one i tell thee fellow there are none want eyes to direct them the way i am going but such as wink and will not use them <laughs> what an infinite mock is this that a man should have the best of eyes to see the way of blindness i am sure hanging's the way of winking enter a messenger knock off his manacles bring your prisoner to the king 
thou bring'st good news i am called to be made free i'll be hanged then thou shalt be then freer than a jailer no boats for the dead exeunt all but the first jailer huh. unless a man would marry a gallows and beget young gibbets i never saw one so prone yet on my conscience there are very a knave's desire to live for all he be a roman and there be some of them too that die against their wills oh, so should i if i were one i would we were all of one mind and one mind good oh there were desolation of jailers and gallowses <laughs> i speak against my present profit but my wish hath a preferment in it exit scene five cymbeline's tent enter cymbeline bellarius guiderius arviragus pisanio lords officers and attendants stand by my side you whom the gods have made preservers of my throne woe is my heart that the poor soldier that so richly fought whose rag shamed gilded arm whose naked breast stepped before targes of proof cannot be found he shall be happy that can find him if our grace can make him so i never saw such noble fury in so poor a thing such precious deeds in one that promised naught but beggary and poor looks no tidings of him he hath been searched among the dead and the living but no trace of him to my grief I am the heir of his reward. To Bellarius, Guiderius, and Aviragus. Which I will add to you, the liver, heart, and brain of Britain, by whom I grant she lived. Tis now the time to ask of whence you are reported. Sir, in Cambria are we born, and gentlemen, further to boast were neither true nor modest unless i had we are honest bow your knees arise my knights for the battle i create you companions to our person and will fit you with dignities becoming your estates enter cornelius and ladies there's business in these faces why so sadly greet your victory you look like romans and not of the court of Britain. Hail, great king. To sour your happiness, I must report the queen is dead. Who worse than a physician would this report become? But I consider by medicine life may be prolonged, yet death will seize the doctor too. How ended she? that horror madly dying like her life which being cruel to the world concluded most cruel to herself what she confessed i will report to please you these her women can trip me if i err who with their cheeks were present when she finished pretty say first she confessed she never loved you only affected greatness got by you not you married your royalty was wife to your place aboard your person she alone knew this and but she spoke it dying i would not believe her lips in opening it proceed your daughter whom she bore in hand to love with such integrity she did confess was as a scorpion to her sight whose life but that her flight prevented it she had taken off by poison o oh, most delicate fiend who is can read a woman is there more more sir and verse she did confess she had for you a mortal mineral 
which being took should by the minute feed on life and lingering by inches faced you in which time she purposed by watching weeping tendance kissing to o'ercome you with her show and in time when she had fitted you with her craft to work her son into the adoption of the crown but failing of her end by this strange absence grew shameless desperate opened in despite of heaven and men her purposes repented the evil she hatched for not effected so despairing died heard you all this O oh, women we did so please your highness mine eyes were not in fault for she was beautiful mine ears but heard her flattery nor my heart that thought her like her seeming it had been vicious to have mistrusted her yet o oh, my daughter that it was folly in me thou mayst say and prove it in thy feeling heaven mend all enter lucius iacimo the soothsayer and other roman prisoners guarded posthumus behind and imogen thou comest not caius now for tribute that the britons have raised out though with the loss of many a bold one whose kinsmen have made suit that their good souls may be appeased with slaughter of you their captives which ourself have granted so think of your estate consider sir the chance of war the day was yours by accident had it gone with us we should not when the blood was cool have threatened our prisoners with the sword but since the gods will have it thus then nothing but our lives may be called ransom let it come sufficeth a roman with a roman's heart can suffer augustus lives to think on't and so much for my peculiar care this one thing only i will entreat my boy a briton born let him be ransomed never master had a page so kind so duteous diligent so tender over his occasions true so feet so nurse-like let his virtue join with my request which i'll make bold your highness cannot deny he hath done no briton harm though he have served a roman save him sir and spare no blood beside i have surely seen him his favour is familiar to me boy thou hast looked thyself into my grace and art mine own i know not why nor wherefore to say live boy now thank thy master live and ask of cymbeline what boon thou wilt fitting my bounty and thy state i'll give it yea though thou do demand a prisoner the noblest thing i humbly thank your highness i do not bid thee beg my life good lad and yet i know thou wilt no no alack there's other work in hand i see a thing bitter to me as death your life good master must shuffle for itself the boy disdains me he leaves me scorns me briefly die the joys that place him on the truth of girls and boys why stands he so perplexed what wouldst thou boy i love thee more and more think more and more what's best to ask knowst him thou look'st on speak wilt have him live is he thy kin thy friend he is a roman no more kin to me than i to your highness who being born your vessel am something nearer wherefore i asked him so i'll tell you sir in private if you please to give me hearing i with all my heart 
and lend my best attention what's thy name fidele sir start my good youth my page i'll be thy master walk with me speak freely cymbeline and imogen converse apart is not this boy revived from death one and another not more resembled that sweet rosy lad who died and was fidele what think you the same dead thing alive peace peace see further he eyes us not forbear creatures may be alike weren't he i am sure he would have spoken to us but we saw him dead be silent let's see further pisanio aside it is my mistress since she is living let the time run on to good or bad cymbeline and imogen come forward come stand thou by our side make thy demand aloud to yakimo sir step you forth give answer to this boy and do it freely or by our greatness and the grace of it which is our honour bitter torture shall win the truth from falsehood on speak to him my boon is that this gentleman may render of whom he had this ring posthumus aside what's that to him that diamond upon your finger say how came it yours thou torture me to leave unspoken that which to be spoke would torture thee how me i am glad to be constrained to utter that which torments me to conceal by villainy i got this ring twas the anatus jewel whom thou didst banish and which more may grieve thee as it doth me a nobler sir ne'er live twixt sky and grand wilt thou him more my lord oh that belongs to this that paragon thy daughter for whom my heart drops blood and my false spirits quail to remember oh give me leave i faint my daughter what of her renew thy strength i had rather thou shouldst live while nature will than die ere i hear more strive man and speak upon a time unhappy was the clock that struck the hour it was in rome a curse the mansion where twas at a feast oh what our viands had been poisoned or at least those which i heaved ahead the good posthumus what should i say he was too good to be where ill men were and was the best of all amongst the rarest of good ones sitting sadly hearing us praise our loves of italy for beauty that made barren the swell boast of him that best could speak for feature laming the shrine of venus or strike pike minerva postures beyond brief nature for condition a shelf of all the qualities that man loves woman for besides that hook of wiving fairness which strikes the eye i stand on fire come to the matter all too soon i shall unless thou wouldst grieve quickly this posthumus most like a noble lord in love and one that had a royal lover took his hint and not dispraising whom we praise therein he was as calm as virtue <laughs> he began his mistress picture which by his tongue being made and then a mind put in it either our brags were cracked of kitchen trolls or his description proved us unspeaking sots nay nay to the purpose your daughter's chastity there it begins he spake of her as dian had hot dreams and she alone were cold whereat i wretch made scruple of his praise and wagered with him pieces of gold gainst this which then he wore upon his honoured finger to attain in suit the place of his bed and win this ring by hers and mine adultery he true knight no lesser of her honour confident than i did truly find her stakes this ring and would so had it been a carbuncle of phoebus wheel and might so safely had it been all the worth of his car away to britain post i in this design 
well may you sir remember me at court where i was taught of your chaste daughter the wide difference twixt amorous and villainous being thus quenched of hope not longing mine italian brain gan in your dull of britain operate most vilely for my vantage excellent and to be brief my practice so prevailed that i returned with similar proof enough to make the noble leonatus mad by wounding his belief in her renown with tokens thus and thus averring notes of chamber hanging pictures this her bracelet how cunning how i got it nay some marks of secret on her person that he could not but think a bond of chastity quite cracked i having tamed the forfeit whereupon oh methinks i see him now posthumus advancing ay so thou dost italian fiend i me most credulous fool egregious murderer thief anything that's due to all the villains past in being to come oh give me cord or knife or poison some upright justice sir thou king send out for torture is ingenious it is i that all the abhorred things of the earth amend by being worse than they i am posthumus that killed thy daughter villain like i lie that caused a lesser villain than myself a sacrilegious thief to do it the temple of virtue was she yea and she herself spit and throw stones cast mire upon me set the dogs in the street to bay me every villain be called posthumus leonatus and be villainy less than twas o oh, imogen my queen my life my wife o oh, imogen 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 peace my lord here here shalt have a play of this thou scornful page <sighs> there lie thy part striking her she falls oh gentlemen help mine and your mistress oh my lord posthumus you ne'er killed imogen till now help help mine honoured lady does the world go round how come they staggers on me wake my mistress if this be so the gods do mean to strike me to death with mortal joy how fares my mistress oh get thee from my sight thou gavest me poison dangerous fellow hence breathe not where princes are the tune of imogen lady the gods throw stones of sulphur on me if that box i gave you was not thought by me a precious thing i had it from the queen new matter still it poisoned me oh gods i left out one thing which the queen confessed which must approve the honest if bizanio have said she given his mistress that confection which i gave him for cordial she is served as i would serve a rat what's this cornelius the queen sir very oft importunes me to temper poisons for her still pretending the satisfaction of her knowledge only in killing creatures vile as cats and dogs of no esteem i dreading that her purpose was of more danger did compound for her a certain stuff which being taken would cease the present power of life but in short time all offices of nature should again do their due functions have you taken of it most like i did for i was dead my boys there was our error this is sure fidele why did you throw your wedded lady from you think that you are upon a rock and now throw me again embracing him hang there like fruit my soul till the tree die oh no my flesh my child what makes thou me a dullard in this act wilt thou not speak to me imogen kneeling your blessing sir Bellarius to guiderius and arviragus though you did love this youth i blame ye not you had a motive for it my tears that fall 
Proof, holy water on the Imogen. Thy mother's dead. I am sorry for it, my lord. Oh, she was not. And long of her it was that we meet here so strangely. But her son is gone, we know not how nor where. My lord, now fear is from me, I'll speak troth. Lord Cloten, upon my lady's missing, came to me with his sword drawn, foamed at the mouth, and swore if I discovered not which way she was gone, it was my instant death. By accident, I had a feigned letter of my master's then in my pocket, which directed him to seek her on the mountains near to Milford, where, in a frenzy, in my master's garments, which he enforced from me, away he posts, with unchaste purpose and with oath to violate my lady's honour. What became of him, I further know not. Let me end the story. I slew him there. Marry, the gods forfend. I would not thy good deeds should from my lips pluck a hard sentence. Prithee, valiant youth, deny it again. I have spoke it, and I did it. He was a prince. A most incivil one. The wrongs he did me were nothing prince-like, for he did provoke me with language that would make me spurn the sea, if it could so roar to me. I cut off his head, and am right glad he is not standing here to tell this tale of mine. I am sorry for thee. By thine own tongue thou art condemned, and must endure our law. Thou art dead. That headless man I thought had been my lord. Find the offender, and take him from our presence. Stay, sir, king. This man is better than the man he slew. As well descended as thyself, and hath more of thee merited than a band of Clotons had ever scar for. To the guard? Let his arms alone. They were not born for bondage. Why, old soldier, wilt thou undo the worth thou art unpaid for by tasting of our wrath? How of dissent as good as we? In that he spake too far. And thou shalt die for it. We will die all three, but I will prove the two ones are as good as I have given out to him. My sons, I must for my own part unfold a dangerous speech, though haply well for you. Your danger's ours. And our good his. Have at it then. By leave thou hadst great king a subject who was called Belarius. What of him? He is a banished traitor. He it is that hath assumed this age. Indeed, a banished man. I know not how a traitor. Take him hence, the whole world shall not save him. Not too hot. First pay me for the nursing of thy sons, and let it be confiscate all, so soon as I have received it. Nothing of my sons. I am too blunt and saucy. Here's my knee. Ere I rise, I will prefer my sons. Then spare not the old father. Mighty sir, these two young gentlemen that call me father and think they are my sons and none of mine they are the issue of your loins my liege and blood of your begetting how oh, my issue so sure as you your fathers i old morgan am that belarius whom you sometime banished your pleasure was my mere offence, my punishment itself, and all my treason. That I suffered was all the harm I did. These gentle princes, for such and so they are, these twenty years have I trained up, those arts they have as I could put into them. My breeding was, sir, as your highness knows. Their nurse, Eurythily, whom for the theft I wedded stole these children upon my banishment. I moved her to it, having received the punishment before for that which I did then. Beaten for loyalty, excited me to treason. Their dear loss, the more of you t'was felt, the more it shaped unto my end of stealing them. But gracious, sir, 
here are your sons again and i must lose two of the sweetest companions in the world the benediction of these covering heavens fall on their heads like dew for they are worthy to inlay heaven with stars thou weepst and speak the service that you three have done is more unlike than this thou tellst i lost my children if these be they i know not how to wish a pair of worthier sons be pleased a while this gentleman whom i call polydor most worthy prince as yours is true giderius this gentleman my cadwell aviragus your younger princely son he sir was lapped in a most curious mantle wrought by the hand of his queen mother which for more probation i can with ease produce guiderius had upon his neck a mole a sanguine star it was a mark of wonder this is he who hath upon him still that natural stamp it was wise nature's end in the donation to be his evidence now oh what am i a mother to the birth of three now mother rejoice deliverance more blessed pray you be that after this strain starting from your orb you may reign in them now o imogen thou hast lost by this a kingdom oh no my lord i have got two worlds by it o oh, my gentle brothers have we thus met oh never say hereafter but i am truest speaker you called me brother when i was but your sister i you brothers when you were so indeed did you err me i my good lord and at first meeting loved continued so until we thought he died by the queen's dram she's followed oh rare instinct when shall i hear all through this fierce abridgment hath to it circumstantial branches which distinction should be rich in where how lived you and when came you to serve our roman captive how parted with your brothers how first met them why fled you from the court and whither these and your three motives to the battle with i know not how much more should be demanded and all the other by dependences from chance to chance but nor the time nor place will serve our long interrogatories see ye posthumous anchors upon imogen and she like harmless lightning throws her eye on him her brothers me her master hitting each object with a joy the canter change is severally in all let's quit this ground and smoke the temple with our sacrifices to Belarius. thou art my brother so will hold thee ever you are my father too and did relieve me to see this gracious season all are joyed save these in bonds let them be joyful too for they shall taste our comfort my good master i will yet do you service happy be you the forlorn soldier that so nobly fought he would have well become this place and graced the thankings of a king i am sir the soldier that did company these three in poor beseeming twas a fitment for the purpose i then followed that i was he speak yakimo i had you down and might have made you finish yakimo kneeling i am down again but now my heavy conscience sinks my knee as then your force did take that life beseech you which i so often owe but your ring first and hear the bracelet of the truest princess that ever saw her face you not to me the power that i have on you is to spare you the malice towards you to forgive you live and deal with others better nobly doomed we'll learn our freeness of a son-in-law pardons the word to all you help us sir as you did mean indeed to be our brother or joyed are we that you are your servant princes good my lord of rome call forth your soothsayer as i slept 
methought great Jupiter, upon his eagle backed, appeared to me, with other sprightly shows of mine own kindred. When I waked, I found this label on my bosom, whose containing is so from sense and hardness that I can make no collection of it. Let him show his skill in the construction. Philomenus! Here, my good lord. Read and declare the meaning. Soothsayer reads, When a lion's whelp shall, to himself unknown, without seeking find, and be embraced by a piece of tender air, and when from a stately cedar shall be lopped branches which, being dead many years, shall after revive, be jointed to the old stock, and freshly grow, then shall posthumus end his miseries. Britain be fortunate, and flourish in peace and plenty. Thou, Leonatus, art the lion's whelp, the fit and apt construction of thy name, being Leonatus, doth impart so much. To Cymbeline, the piece of tender air, thy virtuous daughter, which we call Molly's Ire, and Molly's Ire we term it Mulier, which Mulier I divine, is this most constant wife, who, even now, answering the letter of the oracle, unknown to you, unsought, were clipped about with this most tender air. This hath some seeming. The lofty cedar, royal cymbeline, personates thee, and thy lopped branches point thy two sons forth, who, by Bellarius stolen, for many years thought dead, are now revived, to the majestic cedar joined, whose issue promises Britain peace and plenty. Well, my peace we will begin, and Caius Lucius, although the victor, we submit to Caesar and to the Roman Empire, promising to pay our wonted tribute, from the which we were dissuaded by our wicked queen, whom heaven's injustice, both on her and hers, have laid most heavy hand. The fingers of the powers above do tune the harmony of this peace. The vision which I made known to Lucius ere the stroke of this yet scarce cold battle, at this instant is full accomplished. For the Roman eagle from south to west on wings soaring aloft lessened herself and in the beams of the sun so vanished which foreshowed our princely eagle the imperial caesar should again unite his favour with the radiant cymbeline which shines here in the west lord we the gods and let our crooked smokes climb to their nostrils from our blessed altars publish with this peace to all our subjects set we forward let a roman and a british ensign wave friendly together so through lud's town march and in the temple of great jupiter our peace we'll ratify seal it with peace set on there never was a war did cease her bloody hands were washed with such a peace. Exeunt. End of Act Five. End of Cymbeline by William Shakespeare.